Just to make it clear, <coughs> uh, let's look again for uh, this example. At uh, this example, why it's important to <coughs> why it's important to draw a residual uh, network flow. So, say we want to find max flow through this simple network, right? Well, the first, and say we choose this augmenting path uh, first, right? So we will have one out of one this way, one out of one this way, one out of one this way, zero out of one this way, and zero out of one this way. What does the residual network uh, flow look like? Well, because we have one out of one this direction, then this edge simply disappears, right? But because uh, we have flow of one this direction, we have a virtual pipe appearing in opposite direction, but because what you can do is you can reduce this flow of one, right? Then uh, in this direction, you still have a network uh, you still have a pipe of capacity one. In this direction, this edge disappears because it's fully saturated, but an edge in the opposite direction appears of capacity one. This edge remains because we have zero flow here, so capacity one. And in this direction, this edge disappears, but an edge in opposite direction appears, right? And now this is your residual network flow. And lo and behold, it's obvious that it has an augmenting path, which would be uh, this path. So how do we now obtain the new flow through this network? Uh, we obtain uh, the new flow by simply adding the flow through all affected edges. So in this case, we have to add flow of one to this. So we will have a flow of one out of one, right? This edge remains unchanged. By the way, you should draw a separate picture, but I don't have space here. So I'm doing it on this one, what you should not do on the exams because it's so easy to mess it up. Always, when you revise the flow, draw a new uh, flow graph. Uh, so um, in this direction, we still have a flow of one. Now, we had a flow of one this direction, and the augmenting path added a flow of one is opposite direction. So this cancels out, and you have here a flow of zero out of one, right? This edge was not affected, and in this edge, you have additional flow of one out of one. So notice you simply now have one flow of capacity, I mean of total value one this way, and a flow of one that way, and this is clearly a max flow. But as you see, you can mess it up if you don't draw the residual network flow. The other question I was asked uh, um, is, uh, we just proved that when Ford Falkerson terminates, uh, that the flow produced is equal to the capacity of this associated cut but we didn't show that that flow is maximal possible. But this is, in fact, what we did before uh, with this theorem, right? Because every flow is smaller or equal than capacity of any cut, because any flow, every flow has to pass through all of these cuts, right? So, uh, and clearly, um, these flows cannot be larger than the capacity of these cuts. So all the uh, cuts are on the right from all possible flows. 
So if you find a flow that hits a capacity of a cut, then this flow must be maximal and this cut must be minimal. Why? Well, you see, if this flow is equal to the capacity of this cut, and of course this flow is larger or equal than capacity of any cut, then because the capacity of this particular cut is equal to that flow, clearly uh, this uh, cut must be smaller or equal than any other capacity of any other cut simply because it is equal to a flow and, the, and any flow bounds from below any cut. And the opposite direction as well, this flow must be maximal because every flow is smaller than the capacity of any cut, including then this very cut. But the capacity of this cut is equal to this flow, so then clearly this flow bounds from above every other flow. And for the very same reason, if you have any max flow, regardless how, what algorithm you used, it defines, it must be equal to a mean cut. Why? Well, again, the very same argument. Look at your flow and look at all vertices that you can reach with residual capacity, right? Clearly, you cannot reach the sink. Because if you found an augmenting path that, path that reaches the sink, you can increase the flow for the bottleneck value of that augmenting path. But that's impossible because you assumed that you have a max uh, flow. So every flow, if it's maximal, defines a cut that is of minimal possible capacity simply by looking at all vertices reachable from the source. Sync is not such, so uh, the, this uh, partition of those that are reachable for, uh, and those that are not reachable will be a proper cut. And uh, obviously, this cut has to be uh, minimal, right? Um, okay, so... Um, what else do we have to, yes. Now, as I mentioned, Ford Falkerson, regardless how you add uh, augmenting paths, uh, will eventually converge to a value that is, in fact, the max flow. But the choice of augmenting paths uh, can greatly change the runtime of Ford Falkerson algorithm. To see this, <coughs> in fact, uh, uh, the Ford Falkerson doesn't have to terminate at all in polynomially many steps in, say, n squared many steps uh, or n cube many steps when n is either the vertices or edges, doesn't matter. Why is this so? Well, consider this strange network, uh, right? Uh, so you have large capacity, 1,000 and 1,000 this way, and capacity of one that way. So it's exactly of this type, uh, right? And assume that your first augmenting path is uh, uh, going this way through this pipe of capacity 1,000, then going this way through pipe capacity one, and then again this way, right? Just as it's shown on the picture, right? So what is the resulting flow? It's one over a thousand this way, zero here, uh, one over one this way, and one over a thousand this way. So what is the residual uh, network uh, flow graph? Well, you have a leftover capacity of 999 this way, and a virtual pipe of capacity one that way, yeah? right? Um, then um, you have a, um, a, a change capacity 1,000 this way and capacity 9,099 this way, but you also get 
a virtual pipe in opposite direction here because this pipe is fully saturated. It has a, a flow of one in this direction, so the edge in this direction disappears, but a virtual edge in opposite direction appears with capacity one. And so now you assume that you choose this augmenting path next. <coughs> After you revise uh, <coughs> uh, the flows, you get flow of one this way, one this way, one this way, one this way, and you get flow this way because the first flow of one this way was uh, uh, canceled out by flow of the, in the second augmenting path that way. And lo and behold, now you can continue <coughs> in this way, <coughs> and obviously the total number of steps that you go, can go back and forth will be 2,000, right? But the encoding of the problem <coughs> is uh, logarithmic in the capacity, right? Because uh, it takes a log two of thousand many bits to encode a thousand. So the number of iterations is not polynomial in the size of the problem. Now, does this mean that we can throw away Ford Volkerson algorithm? Well, no, there is a tweak to Ford Volkerson that is called Edmond Scarp Max Flow algorithm. And a beautiful thing about this algorithm is that it is totally counterintuitive in a sense. Because <coughs> uh, the algorithm says the following. It works by <coughs> always choosing the shortest possible path for your augmenting path. So the shortest possible path when the length of the path is simply the number of edges, right? So you can do your favorite shortest path algorithm to find the shortest path from S to T in the residual graph, and this is what you choose. <coughs> Why is this counterintuitive? Because it doesn't mention the capacities. So if you use it, <coughs> If you have capacities, uh, pipes of capacities uh, 1,000 uh, and uh, pipes of capacities 1, but it happens that the shortest path is 1 through very small capacity, it will preferentially choose that path. So it chooses a shortest path in terms of the number of edges and does the augmenting path and takes it as the augmenting path, even if all the capacities are minuscules. And it's a pretty tough mathematical theorem to prove that in this case, uh, uh, in fact, uh, the, uh, the algorithm converges in polynomial time because its runtime is the number of vertices times uh, the square of number of edges, uh, right? <coughs> now, um, the, we are not going to go to the proof, but you can read it in the textbooks if you are mathematically minded. Uh, it's a very beautiful proof, essentially by choosing the shortest path. You limit how often can any of the edges be the bottleneck edge uh, for the augmenting path? And this in turn induces uh, <coughs> this bound, right? <coughs> so notice that the bound is still pretty bad, right? Uh, because if the graph is dense, E can be of order of magnitude V squared, right? So E squared will be then V to the power 4 uh, times V will be V to the power 5, which is a pretty bad runtime. And there are faster but uh, far trickier uh, algorithms uh, such as a push relabel algorithm. 
And the best algorithm to date actually runs in time O of V cube, which is usually much faster than unless the graph is reasonably sparse with, in terms of edges. So as I say, this is a very good <coughs> example of why we need mathematics to design algorithms. For example, to show that uh, uh, Edmonds cart is efficient, it requires a really pretty tricky mathematical, uh, mathematical argument. Uh, okay, so <coughs> as I mentioned in practice, it's often unrealistic to have uh, only one source and only one sink because you can have, say, several oil wells sending oil to several refineries, right? <coughs> and you still want to find maximal throughput <coughs> through the network. But the fix for this is remarkably simple. You simply add two additional vertices, uh, one called super source uh, and one called super sink, and you connect the super source with all of the sources of the original graph, uh, and you make the capacities of these uh, uh, pipes infinite, uh, so that the mean cut can never cut through any of them, right? Um, <clears throat> Of course, in, yeah, in this sense, uh, a cut through such a network uh, would imply that all the sources are on one end and all the sinks are on the other end. And if you put the capacities uh, from the super source to S, all S is to be infinite, of course, uh, no cut can cut uh, across these pipes. So all of the sources will remain on the side where the super source is. And the same applies for the sinks. You connect all the sinks to the super sink by pipes of infinite capacity, and again, the mean cut can never cut any of these edges, so all of these vertices will stay on the same size a super sink, and now you simply would run the standard Ford Fulkerson algorithm with the super source as the source, the only source, and the super sink as the only sink, right? <coughs> so that's a very easy uh, tweak. Uh, there are variants <coughs> of max flow that we are not going to look at, but it's good for you to know if you ever uh, need them that they exist. For example, uh, maybe you see these uh, edges that are, say, the pipes or transportation uh, links uh, have different costs for the flow on them. For example, you might be able to ship ore using trucks uh, and you can also ship uh, or using uh, railroads. And shipping by railroads uh, is cheaper per ton than shipping by trucks. And then your task would be to find among all maximal flows uh, the one that has minimal cost, right? And there are uh, algorithms as well that uh, uh, solve this uh, 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 this problem, uh, you can look them up uh, in, uh, in the textbook uh, or on Google Almighty. Okay, so let's show now <coughs> what kind of things uh, besides uh, um, uh, besides uh, max flow in flow networks can be solved uh, uh, using uh, uh, max, uh, can be reduced to a max flow problem. And the first example 
uh, would be the bipartite uh, matching uh, problem. So assume that you have a bipartite graph. What is a bar bipartite graph? One in which you can split all the nodes into two subsets, two disjoint subsets, so that the, all the edges uh, in the graph go from one side to the other side, right? And now a maximum matching is simply choosing among all these edges a largest possible family of edges such that uh, uh, every vertex has at most, belongs to at most one of the chosen edges, right? Because this is called maximal matching because it, uh, you, if you want to pair uh, the uh, vertices uh, into disjoint pairs, well, maximum matching will produce the maximal number of pairs, right? If this is, uh, say, a dating agency um, and you have the preferences of all uh, participants and you want to uh, find uh, the maximal number of pairs that you can form so that uh, um, the preferences are satisfied. Uh, how is this uh, problem uh, reduced uh, to max flow problem? Again, the same trick, you add a, a super source uh, connected with all the vertices on the left and you add uh, a super sink, right? And again, connected with all vertices on the right. And then you simply uh, do max. Uh, okay, then you assign infinite capacity to all of the edges that you introduced, connecting the edges to the super sink and the super source, right? And all other edges have capacity of one. Right? And then it's easy to see <laughs> that uh, the maximum matching will be simply uh, is reduced to finding max flow through the network and simply choosing <laughs> the edges that are occupied. And clearly here we should use an algorithm such as Ford and Falkerson because it has an important property uh, which is not shared by some other methods like uh, linear programming that you can use to find uh, max flow, uh, that uh, if all the capacities are integers, uh, right, then all the, the uh, Ford Fulkerson algorithm will always produce flows that are of, that is of integer, that are of integer value, because in each round you add um, an augmenting path, the amount of flow that you add is equal to the um, minimal capacity of the edge along this, uh, in the residual flow network along the augmenting path, and it's easy to see or prove uh, rigorously by induction that uh, if you do that, uh, all the flows uh, uh, produced will be of integer uh, value. Why is this important? Well, because a max flow might be obtained also by having a flow of one half this direction and say one half that direction, right? And still be um, uh, mag sorry, what did I say? The capacities of each edge are just one, not infinite. The capacities of all additional edges are only one. Why is this so? Because if the capacity is one, then you can always, uh, and the flow remains integer, right? You will always have uh, at most one edge occupied because the total flow outgoing flow has to be bounded by incoming flow. So if this is one and the flow is integer, so it can be either zero or one, 
and uh, you will use, of course, you will then select the edges that are occupied by flow. Okay, now um, notice that uh, in the uh, residual, residual network flow, as I mentioned, allows you to reroute flaws. For example, if you have a flow like this, uh, then the residual network flow will have these paths, right? So you can go this way, this way, then through virtual pipe uh, that way, uh, then this way, virtual, through the, the virtual edge this way, and then go this way and that way. So uh, you see it allows, it essentially changes which edges are used in the flow. So even though all direct edges from the source to the sink are of length only three. Uh, residual, <coughs> the, the augmenting pads can be of much larger <coughs> length uh, because you might zigzag through these uh, virtual pipes, uh, uh, in effect, uh, uh, rerouting uh, the flow. Okay, so let's give <coughs> other uh, applications of max flow that, uh, again, doesn't look, prima facie is not a problem about flows at all. So here is a problem that we want to look at. So assume that you have a movie rental agency, right? <coughs> well, nowadays this is an outdated problem because uh, there are no more uh, VH VHS uh, tapes that used to be and uh, uh, DVDs that used to be. Now everything goes uh, uh, through, is online and uh, is streamed to your computer, but uh, let's go back in time. So assume that your movie rental agency uh, has uh, K -mo movies in stock and with, uh, for each of the movie, IT movie, it has MI copies, MI DVDs uh, of uh, uh, each movie. And uh, each customer can rent out at most five movies uh, at a time. <clears throat> and customers have sent you their preference, uh, which, uh, you know, which is a list of movies uh, that they would like to see. And of course, you want to maximize your revenue, so you want to dispatch the largest number of movies possible. So in fact, in good old times, when I was a little bit younger, uh, Netflix and similar, uh, there were, how is it called? Uh, was it Blockbuster? You know, they were on Anzac Parade, but went out of business because of internet delivery. Uh, that's exactly um, uh, the ones that were mail in. That was exactly how they would allocate the movies. Namely, they would use a max flow algorithm to dispatch as many movies as possible. So what do you think? Uh, how would you re uh, solve this problem using... Uh, a max flow algorithm. So you have a bunch of customers, right? Here they are. Um, and you have a bunch of movies. And each customer sends you requests which movies they would like to see. Right, they send you, and we can draw a graph. So these are the customers, these are the movies. And for each customer, you connect it with the movie that uh, you can see. Now, each customer can have at most five movies at a time, right? And each, for each movie, uh, so you have, for movie one, you have M1 many copies. 
for movie M2, you have M2 many copies. But maybe you have uh, uh, some of the movies that are popular at the moment. You have more customers wishing to see that movie than you, you have uh, copies. So you cannot satisfy all of the customers. But you want to ship out uh, the largest number of movies. Uh, how would you solve this problem? Very good. So we can add a, a two more nodes. We call this a sync node, and this is, sorry, the source node and the sync node. And we connect the source with absolutely every customer, right? And all of these uh, pipes, so to speak, will have capacity five. Why capacity five? Well, <coughs> if we are looking for a max flow, right, we want to choose uh, at most five movies because that's the limit per customer. So each pipe will have capacity five. And on the other hand, each of these uh, uh, pipes that we connect the other end, the movies with the sink, will have the capacity mi, where mi is number of copies of movies that you have. And each edge, we will assign capacity one. At most, fi well, uh, five movies, I uh, mean, yeah, okay. In computer science, we uh, assume that this is a, uh, a real world application, so I don't think anyone orders two CDs of the same uh, movie, or at least you should hope so. Uh, so, yeah, I should have said to be precise that every customer can have uh, at most five uh, movies which all have to be distinct. So now we simply find max flow through this network. And we use an integer respecting uh, max flow algorithm such as uh, Edmonds Clark, which is guaranteed to converge in polynomial time. And uh, uh, we will then assign, look for all the pipes that are fully occupied. And because it's a unit capacity, you either have a flow of one or a flow of zero because in a Ford Fulkerson, you always add integer amount of flow, right? Now, because the capacity of each of these edge, right? is five, right? The capacity of each edge is five. Uh, then um, you can have at most five occupied uh, pipes on uh, here in this part of the graph. So each customer will get at most five uh, um, movies. Uh, on the other hand, the capacity of each pipe here is equal to the number of copies of the movie that you have. So this limits that uh, you cannot have more than MI customers getting uh, movie I, right? Because the total flow here is at most MI and all the flows across the graph are unit flows uh, so you can have uh, uh, at most uh, mi many edges uh, going through this node uh, that are occupied. So you see this gives, and of course, if the flow is maximal, 
this would exactly mean that the largest number of uh, movies uh, uh, have been uh, allocated. Uh, right, so as you can see, the, um, uh, the, the max flow problems are in fact applicable to a much large, uh, sorry, uh, uh, a large class of problems are in fact reducible to uh, max flow even when uh, uh, for problems that prima facie uh, do not have anything to do uh, with uh, any flows at all. For example, here it was just uh, uh, movie allocation. Okay, let's look at another example. Uh, so, assume that you have a computer network, right? And you have a bunch of servers and you have a bunch of end users and then you have intermediate routing uh, nodes. Uh, and so forth. Uh, and you have the capacity in say uh, megabits per second uh, of uh, each of the uh, links. Okay. Um, so, and assume now that uh, some malicious attack is happening, right? So you get uh, some traffic attacking uh, these destination computers uh, and the only thing that you can do is uh, to disable uh, each, uh, to disable a number of links, right? But of course this costs uh, uh, money so you want to uh, disable as few uh, links as possible because you have to send your crews and to switch off the links. And so how would you, and you are given the capacity of each link, how would you find which links to disable so that no traffic can come from any attacking computers uh, to um, any of the victim computers. How would you find? Why do we need capacity of the link? I wonder why do we need capacities of the link? Okay, so the suggestion is, uh, and in fact this is a good example, of what you can have is that some of information that uh, you might have can be superfluous. So in this case, obviously, the capacities of the link do not matter. But you need a network flow, so what will you choose for the capacities of the links? What value? If you want to minimize the number of links that you have to sever. Yes? One. One, exactly. You simply choose, you simply assign capacity of all links to be one. Then you find max flow by introducing a super source and a super sink right and after you find max flow how do you decide which links to sever 
you want to minimize the total number of links ever. The Exactly. So uh, you simply find max flow not because you are interested in the flow, but because it will give you the capacity of the mean cut. And uh, then uh, the number of links you have to sever is simply the capacity of the mean cut because all the links in the straight direction have capacity 1. So uh, the sum total, uh, so the number of links you have to sever is simply equal to capacity of the mean cut. So in the exam also, if you are asked to find a cut of minimal capacity and you simply say, well, I will look at all cuts and pick the one compute the capacity of each cut and pick the one uh, that has the smallest capacity will bring you credit zero. Why? How long would, uh, how, what would be the efficiency of your algorithm? How many uh, cuts uh, are there in a graph flow graph that has uh, uh, n vertices. Uh, you have to subtract two because they correspond to seek as source, right? They always, you know, in which cut they belong. But the rest is n minus two vertices. And how many subsets of n minus two vertices is two to the power n minus two, which is exponential. So even for reasonably small n, doing it by brute force will produce an unacceptably slow algorithm. So how would you solve this problem if you are given a uh, weighted graph and with two distinct vertices? How would you solve uh, uh, the problem of finding a cut with minimal capacity. Hmm? Yes. Exactly. You simply run the max flow algorithm. Once it terminates, you look what are the vertices accessible from the sink by an augmenting path. And this gives you one side of the partition. And uh, um, the non-acceptable accessible vertices uh, uh, will be the other side of partition, right? So max flow can be, in fact, used to find the mean cut in a graph. OK, now, can there be more than one mean cuts in a graph? Can you have a graph that has two distinct mean cuts? Of course you can, right? So you just take a simple graph like this, right? This is your sink and this is your, sorry, your source. This is your sink. You can cut either here or here. So mean cut is not uniquely determined, but if you run a max flow algorithm, it will definitely uncover for you uh, at least one uh, minimal cut, right? Just by running uh, Ford Falkerson algorithm. Okay, so um, we are going to release probably today uh, or tomorrow uh, if I don't fall asleep uh, uh, beforehand, uh, uh, the next uh, assignment uh, for you to practice dynamic programming and uh, basic max flow. And given the capacity of our tutors, that might be unfortunately the last assignment, but uh, I will give you heaps of... Um,
these problems to prepare for the final that is coming soon, okay? I'll see you tomorrow.